Challenge runs that sound very simple are often the most difficult, and today we're taking on a viewer request from Varby Magicians, who asks, can you beat the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with only bombs? Well, let's find out. We're banning the use of all swords, crossbows, potions, decoctions and oils, and signs cannot be used in battle. As always, we're playing on a fresh save file on the hardest difficulty setting, and of course, no glitches, mods, cheats, etc. Let's go. Our adventure kicks off in the Witcher home base of Kaer Morhen, where we can skip both Ciri's movement tutorial and, thankfully, Vesemir's combat tutorial, before waking up in White Orchard. We're immediately thrown into the deep end as we get ganked by a pack of ghouls, and since we have no bombs yet, we have literally no way of dealing any damage to these guys. Our horse Roach isn't keen to give us a lift, so we're forced to run away on foot. Despite the main quest objective stating that we must defeat the ghouls to progress, we in fact do not. Simply running away as far as this bridge here automatically triggers the next cutscene and brings both Vesemir and Roach to our location. Nice. At this first tavern, it's essential that we start planning out how we're going to be using our money in this run. Since we're on the incredibly tough Death March difficulty, enemies have 80% more health and deal a whopping 230% more damage. So without potions, stocking up on food to heal ourselves will be absolutely essential. Alongside Gwent cards, which will allow us to play the minigame as a cheeky side hustle, buying Alkahest will be absolutely essential, because after we do finally craft a bomb, it'll have limited uses, so we'll have to burn through alcohol to replenish the supply. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get through a lot of booze in this run. After smashing the Gwent tutorial, we're approached by these two fine gentlemen. We attempt the Axie Sign dialogue option, since signs outside of combat are allowed by the rules, but it only brainwashes one of the trio, leaving the other two to want to fight. But we still can't deal any damage yet, so we are out of there. We grab some underwater buckthorn plants, which we'll need a bit later, while we have a think about our next course of action. We need to craft some bombs ASAP, but the local herbalist is the only one that sells the supplies we need. Shame she's, well, <laughs> out for a wander right now. <laughs> right, that's it, we're ransacking your property. <laughs> Serves you right. Stealing is wrong. It's only after sealing a deal with the local Nilfgaardians to slay a griffin that the herbalist finally appears. We would buy all the ingredients we need to craft the two bomb recipes we have, but... Not enough cash, stranger. <laughs> yeah, we're forced to go foraging to sell literal weeds in order to raise enough capital for the bare minimum ingredients for this challenge run to begin. I wish I could say things only got better from here, but nope, <laughs> trust me, things will get far more degrading than this. Alright, with both the grape shot and salmon bomb types crafted, we can finally start attacking enemies. Let's go! Salmon's just blind enemies and are therefore effectively useless, whereas grape shots deal mm, Wait, wait what? Barely a quarter of the health bar of a weak low level enemy, and we only have two uses before needing to meditate to replenish the supply, which in turn resets all enemy HP. Ah, yep, we can't even kill a single freaking enemy yet. <laughs> what is this challenge run? Our only option is to farm side quests and optional objectives for minuscule amounts of XP. It's pleasantly surprising how much stuff you can actually interact with without needing to engage in any combat. Just gotta wait for enemies to stroll away before we move in. We loot corpses on a battlefield before failing to interact with this place of power for a free ability point due to the wraith spawning in as soon as we get close. So we go to this axie one instead and spend our first hard earned point in the bomb skill tree, naturally. After inspecting the body of a dead griffin and grabbing another free skill point, we're ready to take on the game's first main story boss. But before we do, we'd better get ourselves prepared. After listening to this lady's beautiful mannerisms, we try taking on the optional Devil by the Well contract boss, but uh, yeah, 
we're barely scratching the thing. This game does allow us to meditate without resetting its health, so at first I was optimistic that we could just keep replenishing our supply of bombs, gradually taking the thing down, but eventually it's just like nope and resets to full HP. Ah, sod it. We've been playing for hours now and still haven't defeated a single enemy. Even with our bomb damage buffs from the skill tree, just just look at this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We even tried taking down some level 2 ghouls, but it's the same deal. We're getting them super low though. Once we can finally kill them, we'll have a way to start farming XP. But until then, we're forced to continue with the main story for now. Full disclaimer, the game does force you to craft and equip a Thunderbolt portion here, but we immediately unequip it afterwards without ever using it. And after ransacking innocent people's homes to deprive them of their life's possessions, it's finally time to take on the game's first main story boss, Royal Griffin. The fight begins and we immediately blow our lord, with the two grape shot bombs dealing a respectable amount of damage. We follow it up with a Samum to blind the thing, but it's soon airborne. Obviously we're not allowed to use the crossbow that the game keeps badgering us to equip, and we've already sold our swords to prove that there's no cheating going on here. But what's the plan here? Like, we can't meditate mid-battle, and our final Samum bomb really won't do anything, so how are we supposed to take the Griffin's remaining 90% HP down? Well, it's Vesemir to the rescue as his Igni deals massive damage, cutting off another big chunk of its health bar. Vesemir and the Griffin are actually being really aggressive towards each other. Maybe we can just stand back and watch? Will the game even allow us to do that? Well, as it turns out, yes. After five and a half minutes, the thing flies off, but Vesemir gives chase. Oh, wait for me! Yeah, I'm sticking with this guy. Sadly, Vesemir is a bit less useful in Phase 2, maybe because he's fighting on an incline so it's confusing his AI, or maybe he's just programmed this way to allow Geralt to get the final blow, who knows. But sure enough, four and a half minutes later, the old man introduces the beast to a jolly good helping of conflagration. Ha <laughs> ha job done. With the Griffin defeated, we've hit level 2, but we still need way more ability points before we can deal enough damage to actually kill something. There's only one thing for it. We need to grind some more. Luckily, if you're patient enough and time it just right, you can sneak behind these ghouls to grab this place of power. No, we're still not strong enough to kill them yet. As well as this really glitchy one in the cemetery that it seems that you can only collect from the front. Whoa, 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 easy there, easy. <laughs> Ooh, that was scary. That just leaves one final place of power. If we can grab this one undetected, we'll have enough ability points for a huge damage buff and we will finally be able to kill things. Come on. Yes, nice, let's go. With pyrotechnics equipped, we head back to those damn drowners and aim for the lower level one. First blast, half health, looking promising. Second blast, yes, woo. We finally defeated our very first enemy. <laughs> There's no stopping us now. There was in fact going to be plenty stopping us. We take down a single ghoul for all time's sake before telling Vesemir that we're ready to continue on. Sadly a brawl erupts but well, <laughs> gory. Now that we've met up with Yennefer, we venture onto the Zima, where we get sorta kinda interrogated before agreeing to help Emperor Emir find his daughter, the infamous Ciri, which is basically the main objective for the majority of the game. We've now arrived in Velen, an absolutely massive open world area where the majority of the game will take place. We complete the funeral pyre's side quests by throwing bombs at piles of corpses, avoid starting a barroom brawl by buying these angry chaps another drink, and find Nilfgaardian Agent Hendrik's notes which branch the main story into several paths, arguably the easiest of which is the Baron subplot, which is mandatory in order to complete the game. Now, where did that horse go? No? <laughs> Gotta love it when that happens. It turns out Roach was uh, otherwise engaged. <laughs> right, now come closer. No, you're coming here. I'm not coming to you. <sighs> For God's sake. 
We meet up with Sorceress Kira Metz, but instead of following her into that dark tunnel full of god knows what, we'll do literally anything else. <laughs> In all seriousness, we don't have the damage output nor the sustainability for an actual dungeon yet, so we roam the lands in search of better gear and more free ability points, of which there are surprisingly few. Uh, why did I save this clip? Oh right, yeah, I got super excited when I saw alchemy supplies, like woo, more bombs! But it turned out to be just Kira Metz again, so I just spent almost an hour going around in one big circle. <laughs> There's a glitchy place of power here that won't draw if you're stood at a certain angle, and even the sound stops working properly for some reason. Here, check this out. We try to scale the castle walls to avoid the drowners, but this happens. <laughs> Why do you guys do this to me? Okay, we reload the last save file to try again, and... Uh, <laughs> I'm really reaching the end of my tether here, people. Third attempt, and we're finally in! Ho oh, ho! Bruh, you said no glitches, dislike, and subscribe. Uh, well, this is the remastered version of the game for modern platforms, and this well-known method of gaining entry wasn't patched out, so I'm counting this as acceptable. Look, we really need every bit of loot we can get here, right? And look at that view! Oh, gorgeous! Wait, is that a random board out there? Oh, nice detail. Alright, where were we? Alright, yeah, seeing the Baron at Crow's Perch. Ooh. One, two, three! One, two, three! <laughs> hey! The issue is that this conversation leads to a huge roadblock. You see, we get a story flashback in which we're forced to control Siri, who has no bombs and no way to craft any. This means we need to get through her unskippable section without dealing any damage. The problem? Well, we need to get up this ledge, but the game won't allow us to jump while in combat, because that button or key gets remapped to the dodge command. There are three wolves here that we simply cannot defeat, nor can we get past them, so we just let them kill us to see if it allows us to skip the flashback. But no, this section is mandatory. We spend almost an hour jumping up the rocks here to find any way out of this chasm, but even if you do manage to make it to the top, there's an invisible wall preventing the player from leaving this area or avoiding the encounter with the wolves. After a lot more investigating, we get another lead. Walking up this boulder on the left hand side prevents the wolves from reaching us and sometimes reverts back to allowing us to jump, even though the wolves are still agitated and the battle music is still playing. So we're kind of like half in combat? <laughs> I don't know. We can't jump far enough though, and if we do position ourselves within jumping range, we never enter half combat mode. But even if we could get up this ledge, I'm pretty sure there'd be an invisible wall waiting for us there too, so it's fair to say that this mandatory Siri section cannot be completed with only bombs. To make matters worse, we are locked into Crow's Perch until the Siri section is completed with no way of escape, effectively soft locked here. So my magician friend, no, you can't beat the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with only bombs. But for everyone out there who's not sick of the sound of my voice yet, here is a playlist of all of our challenge runs so far, most of which have been successful. I really want to do more of these viewer request runs in the future, so let me know if you've got any good ideas. I'll try anything so long as it's an RPG, obviously. Alright, see you later everyone. Cheers.